So, this week we do a short one, the most basic Lightroom edit ever, from start to beginning, especially for beginners, because I have a week off on my daily job, I want to spend some time with the family, some time off screen. The studio came together quite nicely, I still have some trash laying around, some bags that didn't find a place yet, but Let's not go to much detail and let's start the edit. So we head over to Lightroom Classic. As you can see, I took a picture on the weekend from a lake nearby. Pretty basic picture, not the best picture in the world a good picture to showcase what we are doing today. First things first, we go to the lens corrections. We look for enabling profile corrections, so we correct the distortions some lenses have. You see, some distortion, no distortion. We remove the chromatic aberrations. Chromatic aberration is like a mistake done by the combination of your lens and your sensor in really bright parts. So the color, the light is splitting up into color, and we don't want this. Sounds weird, technical, probably not right, but here you can remove those mistakes. So we go to the cropping tool. Here you can correct the angle, matching the horizon. Lightroom pretty often does a really good job with automatically straighten the photo. Like here, it worked quite nice. So, now head over to the basic. I want a little bit more exposure, my personal preference. And then we reduce the contrast because we gain a lot of contrast back later in the tone curves. We reduce the highlights to get some more details from the sky. Nice. We pull up the shadows so we get more details in the shadows. Nice. And now we broaden up the histogram by putting some more whites into it and reduce the blacks. So the histogram becomes white. I personally want a little bit less clarity to get this more the softer look in the image. And I personally reduce the saturation. I don't like this HDR over saturated look in the pictures. And then we head over to the tone curves. The tone curves is a pretty simple thing but it looks really difficult and what the f why is there a dog fight out there? Is it over? I think. Okay. Sorry. And there are the tone curves. Tone curves are pretty easy. On the right hand side you have the highlights. On the left hand side you have the shadows. So Left hand side, dark, right hand side, bright. We do the typical S curve. We darken the shadows, we line up the highlights. This is for all for the picture overall. Now we get to the red channel. As you see, there is red and this greenish bluish color. We do the same thing. This looks weird at first, but if you do this on all the colored channels, you will see that like this we add a nice contrast, a nice stylization in the picture. We darkened the yellow parts 
we took some more light into the blue parts. The dog is still fighting out there. <laughs> and so we look into the before and the after. Nice. So much more contrast. The colors got punchier. This is what you want. So we go to the color mixer. There we have this three options. Hue is like the tone of your color. The saturation is how much color is in there. And luminance is how bright those colors are. We start with the hue. I usually put my reds a little bit more to the orange. My orange a little bit more to the yellows. And my yellows a little bit more to the oranges. Because I want to have this golden orange warm look in my pictures. Then we look at the greens. Are there any greens? Yes, we have some greens there. And I want to have those a little bit greener to match the overall look. No across there really. We have a lot of blues because of the sky and the water. I want to have the water a little bit greener for a more filmish look. Do we have any purple? We have a little bit purple back there. And I want to have this purple a little bit more on the blue side to match the sky and the water. Probably no magenta there. Right. Now we go to the saturation. I usually put a little bit more saturation in the reds to get things like this thing back here a little bit popping out. Then we go to the oranges. I desaturate the oranges sometimes if it's too much on the golden arrow. I think there we can put a little bit more in there. I tend to reduce the yellows always to get a better green tone because of the yellow which is in the greener colors. And then we look at the green we have here. We can boost it a little bit up. Probably not much happening in the aqua again. And then we have the blues. There is really much happening. I want to read the hues a little bit now because I don't want to have this unnatural, oversaturated blue tone. I want to have some kind of a good rep uh, representation of what I saw at the day. Probably not much happening in, in the purple back there. Can reduce it a little bit to get that purple haze. Um, reduced back there. Probably not much happening in the magenta. Yeah. So, luminance. Let's brighten up some parts. Brighten up the reds a little bit, brighten up the oranges a little bit, even the yellows, so we get all the details there. In the greens, well, a little bit more, not much happening with the aquas, and maybe a little bit less in the blues, so it looks a little bit more dramatic. And then we brighten up the purples a little bit so we get a little bit more details here in the back. And this was it with the color mixer. Now color grading. We know the most basic thing in color grading ever to get a really nice look there. We make the shadows a little bit colder and the highlights warmer. So the dark parts, gold, the bright parts, warm. So you get that kind of orange and teal look. Not that much, don't overdo it. Before, after, before, after. So we have this nice, firm kind of look. A little bit vintage -y. So, the details. We don't need to adjust anything on there because 
it's more like a thing for printing, less for posting on the internet and most people nowadays, to be honest, post their pictures on Instagram or other social media platforms. So we just ignore that. Lens corrections, we already have been there. Transforming, we have nothing to do there. We don't want any lens blur. And effects, we don't want to have anyone yet in, but so you know, there you can do that. What we do is, now we look into the detail, we want some grain. Not that much grain, but a little bit more. I like when those pictures have like a little bit more texture. Personal preference, again, you can do it, you don't have to. Some people like that image cleaner, some like a rougher. I like those textured roughness. In the calibration point, it's difficult to explain what you actually do there. It's another way of color correction, um, which is happening for all the other sliders. Some guys once explained it to me like, you know, calibrate the colors coming out of the camera. I don't know if this is correct. It sounds kind of wrong to be honest. But yeah, it's another way of color correction. Let's make it easy. Don't complicate such things too much. I usually want to have a little bit more tint to the green. We play around with the hue of the reds. I want to have them a little bit more on the right hand side, but less saturated. Same thing with the primary green color. A little bit more on the right, a little bit less saturation. The primary blues. Sorry for all the sounds in the background, I don't know what the people are doing today. A little bit more on the left side and a little bit less saturated. So, before, after, before, after. Again, we want to go a little bit more into this look. So, before we go into the mask, after adjusting the calibration, I need something to drink. To hold up the voice a little bit. So, pretty good picture there. Until now, now we can do some fine tuning with the mask. We make pretty basic adjustment. It's just. Yeah, Monday morning. Good thing. Um, yes, we do some basic things. A lot of photographers do. We put up a gradient from the bottom because there we have the darker parts. We darken up the part down here. We take another linear gradient from where the sun came. We dehaze that a little bit. So we get this film look again where the light hits. We want to have a little bit hazy, brighter look on the side down in the picture. This was not correct English, sorry. <laughs> Down in the picture, we want to have a little darker part. And before, after, before, after. It looks a little bit more dramatic. And now we come up with a radial gradient. And all we do there is we brighten it again a little bit up, a little bit less contrast because. 
only pond and then some more sunlight and the temperature move a little bit more tinting to the pink so as you see I put up the highlights a little bit, the shadows, less contrast, a little bit more exposure because it simulates a little bit the sun coming from the side so for the mask, after the mask, pretty in a romantic picture looking nice and we are done this is the whole setup nothing more to do there so still talk like 15 minutes I don't know why but 15 minutes for one picture from A to C the whole edit I think we can work like that here is the before here is the after good edit in my opinion I hope you like it you can comment if you want to you can subscribe if you want to until the next video goodbye photos from the lens we do a little lightroom and it's so hi that's me So, hi, today, wow. <clears throat> so, this way, we're gonna do a short one. That's why I auction your sh**.